there, art nerds. Today I have a cute and easy watercolor stash buster bookmark tutorial for how to paint an adorable solar system bookmark. So grab your paints, grab your brushes, and let's get painting. The materials you'll need to paint this bookmark are a scrap of cotton rag coal press watercolor paper. You're also going to need some masking fluid and masking tape. I'm using MT's washi tape. You're going to need some kind of structural support to tape your bookmark to. You're also going to need some of your favorite paints. Ideally, some of those will be granulating paints, but it's fine if you don't have them. You're also going to need your favorite paint brushes, and I also recommend having Having a synthetic watercolor brush and some brush soap. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my Daily Driver watercolor palette a spritz. This is just the watercolor palette that I use all the time. You guys can see that it's gotten a lot of love. Then I'm going to soap up my synthetic brush and stick it in a dinky dip full of masking fluid. And I'm using a splatter technique by knocking gently on my brush to splatter some stars into the background. I'm going to allow that to dry fully and then I'm going to start painting the gradient that I'm going to use for the planets. Now you can use whatever colors you want. I wanted to go with something kind of realistic to the planets themselves so that they would be more recognizable. So I'm using browns, oranges, blues, reds, more blues. You guys will see. And I'm painting it wet into wet. So I'm beginning the next stripe into the prior stripe. And if I want to adjust the colors, I just go ahead and add in some more colors. So if you want to paint slightly more realistically, just go ahead and Google the solar system and it'll give you some ideas for what to paint your planets. And for this bookmark, I am also including our moon, but not Mars's moons or Jupiter's moons just because lazy. And I'm also including Pluto because Pluto gets left out plenty. I didn't want to leave out our favorite little planetoid. So I'm going to let it dry completely Completely, totally and fully and I'm going in with some of my super granulating watercolors and I've got a mix here of the Supervision super granulating watercolors and the Paul Rubens Shi Yun super granulating watercolors if you're curious about either I've got reviews and tutorials here on the channel where I can show you how to use them I just think they're fun they offer some interesting granulating techniques that are a little bit more unusual than what I see in my normal watercolor palette I do want to warn you guys though that these are not particularly light fast but you know what if we're going to use our stash buster bookmarks as bookmarks they're going to see some wear and tear anyway so i'm not really worried about it so i'm using the same kind of technique that i used on the prior layer where we're doing stripes of color and we're working our next stripe into the past stripe so that we encourage some wet into wet blending this can be a way to get some neat ombre blends I'm going to allow that to dry totally and then using my masking fluid and my synthetic brush I'm going to start painting the planets and I'm just kind of freehanding them starting with Mercury. So if you are a fan or worry fan of Sailor Moon you should be a dab hand at this. You should know your planets by now. Then we're going to have Venus. Then a little twist on the song because I can hear you humming it. We're going to paint Earth and Earth's moon. So see, we did get Usagi and Mamoru in there somewhere. Then we're going to hit up old Mars, who is always my least favorite Sailor Scout. I was, I was always kind of a Venus and Jupiter stan myself. Then after we paint Earth and the moon, like I said, we're going to get Mars. So if you can paint circles, you got this. This is the only technical drawing ability you're really going to need. So then we paint Mars and I'm not trying to do it to perfect scale but I am trying to get it kind of to scale. I'm trying to get it to look recognizable as the planets. Then we have big old Jupiter. If you really want to be realistic Jupiter would take up like the whole bookmark. Now you do have the option once this is all said and done to paint some more distinctive discerning qualities to your planets if you want to. I chose not to. I liked how simple and cute they turned out. But this is your bookmark. You can feel free to take it off the rails and paint it however you wish at any point. Then we're going to have Saturn and I'm going to make sure to paint the ring. I thought I painted the ring. How did I miss the rings of Saturn? Oh, there we go. And what I did is I left a little island before it entered the planet. So it's just a little bit more readable. Then we're going to have Neptune and Uranus. And yeah, I hear you snickering. 
So I'm kind of taking my time. I actually slowed this part down so that you guys could see what I was doing a little bit better. And then finally, we're going to have Pluto all the way at the end. Again, if we were going for realism, this would be a super long bookmark. And poor little Pluto would be way, way, way out there. But we're not going for accuracy. We're going for cute and we're going for easy to paint. So hopefully this one will encourage you guys to paint along. Talking about painting along, I've got a bunch of other Stash Buster watercolor tutorials here on the channel. I've got some really cute ideas and I hope you guys will check those out and paint along with me. This could be a great way to practice some of your watercolor skills. So I am grabbing a darker color. I believe it's either neutral tint or maybe neutral tint mixed with a little purple. And I'm doing a layer of a watercolor on top of our masked off planets. You can still see some of those beautiful colors that we used previously. We've got some cosmic latte going on, but it's going to leave our planets much brighter and more brilliant. And as I'm going, if I feel the need, if I feel the calling, I mix in a little bit of a darker color and add that to our bookmark. So I allowed that to dry and I'm going back into our masking fluid. And I'm gonna splatter some more stars. This is gonna create an effect of distance. So we're building up layers of color. If you're interested in using atmospheric perspective to make your art look a little bit more realistic, it's a variety of techniques that, don't worry, do not involve perspective grids. It's all about size and placement and overlap and color. I've got some great tutorials on that here on the channel as well that I hope you guys will check out. So I allow my masking fluid to dry and I go in with a layer of black on top of our stars and our planets so that things really start to pop out but like I said if there was any point where you were happy with how this turned out and you wanted to hop off the train feel free to make it your own decorate it however you want I want this to serve as an inspiration Bowie says make sure you prop up your watercolor so gravity can help you do some of the work you can get some of those softer granulations that way and then we need to allow it to dry once we've finished applying our color. This Stash Buster series is designed to get you guys painting even if you feel like you can't draw. I have some fun and easy watercolor tutorials that really focus on the watercolor aspects of watercolor rather than the drawing and illustration aspects of watercolor. I do have some drawing focused, some illustration focused watercolor tutorials here on the channel as well as some comics focused watercolor tutorials here on the channel. So if you're interested in either of those, I hope you guys will check it out. So I'm just kind of zhuzhing it some more adding in some lunar black so we get some interesting black granulation and some lunar violet to our background just to kind of make things a little bit more interesting to add some grit and to add some visual interest and basically I'm just kind of gilding the lily because it looks fine now and it turned out great either way so you know don't feel like you have to do every step I'm doing here there hits a certain point where good enough is good enough and you can continue to push it and play around with different techniques if you want to, or you can call it a day and be happy with your bookmark. I allowed it to dry totally and fully. I let it dry overnight and I'm using a masking fluid pickup to gently and carefully remove our masking fluid. And this makes for such a fun reveal. I love peeling away the masking fluid. It's so satisfying. So if you are interested in painting along and you don't have the watercolor materials, I will have them listed out down for you guys. Wait, I'll have them listed out in the description for you guys. So make sure you check that out. I'll also have some other tutorials that I think you guys will be interested in watching so make sure you check that description and if you're new here it really mean a lot to me if you considered subscribing and clicking that bell notification and letting YouTube know that you want to see more stash buster tutorials in the future so our bookmark is almost done it turned out really really cute all that's left is to carefully peel away our washi tape pulling away at a 90 degree angle so if 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 it does tear, not that it did tear, if it does tear, it doesn't tear into your art, it tears away from your art. Some people will also use a hair dryer to loosen that adhesive, that's something I haven't tried yet, but I thought that was a neat tip and I wanted to pass it along to you guys. And there we have it, another finished 
Stash Buster watercolor tutorial. I think this one turned out really cute. It's also very easy. This could be a fun one to do with some younger artists. A great way to keep those summer days busy or maybe a fun Saturday or Sunday activity. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and let me know what other tutorials you guys would be interested in checking out. My Stash Buster tutorials mainly focus on one or two techniques and my goal is for you guys to have a high success rate. I want you guys to make something cute. Huge, enormous thanks to my amazing patrons on Patreon. They make tutorials like this possible. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye guys.